My first competitive swimming race ever was the 25-yard freestyle. For those of you that don't know, this is one lap of the pool. Now, a good time for an eight and under would have been about 30 seconds. I didn't do that. 45 seconds would have been an, been an all right time. I didn't do that either. One minute would have been a pretty slow time, and I didn't even do that. It took me two minutes and 25 seconds to swim one lap of the pool. Over half the time I was swimming, I wasn't racing anyone. The other kids had already gotten out of the pool and finished their race. At about the halfway point, you could see and hear me crying in the water. Who would have thought that that kid would grow up to become a two-time national champion and an age group world record holder? I'm sure somebody accomplished this, but it definitely wasn't me. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry for lying, but I just wanted that one moment when you would all be sitting there thinking, wow, this kid is incredible. <laughs> Swimming has the unique ability to affect the lives of its participants far beyond the pool. From the lessons you learn to the friends you make, swimming will affect you outside of just the sport. Swimming is the perfect topic for the theme of Beyond Boundaries, because all swimming is is people breaking their own boundaries and applying what they learned outside of the pool. Teaching swim lessons has been one of the most rewarding things I have done in my life. It is also one of the most influential things I have done. Learning to swim is very interesting in the fact that it is a learned behavior. Unlike running, it is not an instinctual thing that everyone inherently knows how to do. Kids have to put in time, effort, and hard work to learn how to swim, and we see this through swim lessons. A typical swim lesson starts in the shallow end. Here, all the kids are happy and smiling and enjoying it. But as soon as I say, all right, guys, let's go to the deep end now, the happy, smiling faces turn to shock and fear, and the laughter turns to tears, and they all shout to me, no, please, no. And this initially perplexed me. What caused this drastic change from the shallow end to the deep end? The answer was really quite simple, fear. But the kids weren't actually afraid of swimming in the deep end. No, it was much different. They were terrified of not having their safety rope, the ground, to hold on to. You see, these kids know what drowning means. They know that if they go under the water, they will not be able to breathe, and they could possibly die. This fear is the exact fear that people with commitment issues face. No, not drowning or not dying, but instead, not having their safety rope to hold on to. People who are afraid of commitment in either a business situation or just in relationships are not afraid of the commitment itself. Instead, they are terrified of not having their safety rope to hold on to. This is because when you commit to something, you fully relinquish all safety, and now you have to meet an expectation. By never committing to anything, these people never have to experience any backlash or embarrassment. And this fear of embarrassment is very real, and to these people is as dangerous as drowning. So just as there is no fear of swimming, there is no real fear of commitment. The fear only comes from what happens when one cannot back out halfway through. So the question of how does one learn to commit remains unanswered. Well, if you wish to learn to swim, you must first swim in the deep end where there is no ground to save you. Just the same, if you wish to learn to commit, you must swim in the deep end where there is no ground to save you. For a moment, picture this. Let's pretend that swimming is a job that pays well over six figures. So now you study hard while in high school to one day achieve your dream goal of becoming a swimmer and making a lot of money. You apply to the University of Phelps, hoping to get accepted into the School of Butterfly to earn the most prestigious degree that anyone in the major of swimming can earn. You study hard because you still have to take the SAT, the swimming aptitude test. <laughs> Lucky you. You're good at pen and paper tests, so you pass with flying colors. You score a 1550 out of 1600, almost a perfect score. You get to go to the university of your choice, and you are ecstatic that you get to study to become a swimmer. You eagerly take notes on the techniques that the professors are talking about. You read many books about the history of swimming. And finally, after four years, you are ready to write your 200-page essay titled, The Effects That a Multi-Aerobic Workout Has to the Body. And finally, you graduate. 
and you get a little slip of paper that says you are a certified swimmer. So naturally, you go out and buy the most expensive pair of goggles and swim trunks you can find. You're completely broke and have $100,000 worth of debt hanging over your head, but you are a certified swimmer. So you go to your local pool, take a running start, and jump as far as you can out into the deep end. Well, you've never actually swam before, you are a certified swimmer and have the piece of paper to prove it. So when you finally hit the water, you immediately sink. There are so many things in life that you cannot learn from sitting through a lecture or reading a textbook. Things like being an entrepreneur, swimming, or teaching have to be learned through personal experience. You cannot read from a book what it is like to begin to go underwater and panic. You cannot learn from a lecture what it is like to stay calm in the water until you have actually been in the water and panicked before. It's completely absurd that we send kids to business school and never give them any real experience in an actual business. It's absurd that we send teachers to college and don't let them teach until their final year of class. And if swimming was worth money, we would send kids to school and never take them to a pool. So I ask, what does your swimming degree actually mean? You see, the problem is so many people sink because they have never actually swam in the deep end before. Believe it or not, I have learned quite a bit from the kids that I teach, and on occasion, these kids actually inspire me. One little boy in particular comes to mind. About halfway through a lesson, I was helping another kid, and this boy decided that he wanted to swim now. So he pushes off the wall, and he, he's going. One problem, he doesn't know how to swim. So he immediately starts to go under the water. I'm about five yards away. I rush, pick him up, pull him out, and he coughs up some water and starts crying. So I take him to the wall. He gets out and does not return for the rest of the swim lesson. And in that moment, I was pretty upset because I thought I had lost him. I thought that he would never be returning to swim lessons again, and I thought that he would never learn how to swim. I was pleasantly surprised the next day when I saw the boy eagerly waiting for swim lessons to start. This little seven-year-old boy taught me what failure means. He showed me that as long as he got back in the water and tried again, he could not fail. Lack of success and failure are not synonymous with one another. All lack of success means is that you did not achieve what you set out to do. Failure, on the other hand, is giving up on that goal or that dream. One of my favorite quotes is that failure is not an option. This does not mean that you must always succeed. It simply just means that you can never give up on your dream. Every time that you fail, you must get back up and try one more time. If you fail 12 times and you get back up and try a 13th, because failure is not an option. Giving up on your dream is not an option. And refusing to get back into the deep end and swimming again is not an option. The biggest supporters of my swimming career have been both my parents and my grandparents. My dad drove me to every meet growing up, giving up his weekends, waking up as early as five in the mornings. So dad, I say thank you for believing in me. My mother would be at every meet giving up her weekends, cheering me on as loud as she can until there was no more voice left. To my mother, I say thank you for believing in me. My grandparents would be at every meet yelling as loud as they could for me to win. To my grandparents, I say thank you for believing in me. The last and most important lesson that swimming has taught me is that if we truly want to succeed, then we need people by our side. No matter what it is, no matter how hard it is, if we want to succeed, we need people with us every step of the way, yelling as hard as they can for us to win. And in some cases, this means that you must get over your fear so that you can be there for the people that need you the most. Recently, I found out that about 50% of the United States does not know how to swim. Much of this is due to financial reasons. If the question is ever asked, do I put food on the table or sign my kids up for swim lessons, the answer requires zero thought. 
With this in mind, a few kids and I from my school's National Honor Society created a program that would teach swim lessons for free for families that could not afford them otherwise. We all felt a need to give back to these kids and give them an opportunity to experience the sport that gave us everything. While the program started out slow in the first trial and only a few kids showed up, we all hope to grow and develop the program so that we can help as many people as possible. Everyone has a dream that they wish to accomplish. It can be big, like being an entrepreneur or even being an astronaut. It can be small, like committing in a relationship or telling someone you love them. No matter what it is, I think it's time that we all started taking our own swim lessons. It's time that we all started committing and getting over our fear of not having our safety rope. It's about time that we stopped letting failure determine whether or not we continue moving forward. I think it's about time that we all started swimming in the deep end today. Thank you very much.